Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the class today. We see 213 on the end times. Um, let's pray and we'll get started. May I request one of the students to um, please unmute and pray, then we can start. Anyone can pray? Yes. Oh, I have to unmute. Yeah, your mic is on. It's on oh, I have to unmute. Okay. Lord, we come before you. We thank you for this day, O oh Lord Father. We thank you for gift of life that you have given in our lives, O oh Lord Father. This is as we're going to study into your scriptures, O oh Lord Father. Study, O oh Lord Father. Holy Spirit, God, we ask you to guide us and help us to understand every secret thing that you have in store for us, O oh Lord Father. We submit everything into your hands. You come and have your ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right, welcome everyone. Let's um, uh, pick up from where we paused last week. We uh, gave an introduction to what we're going to be covering in this course on the end times. And then after that, uh, we went through part of chapter one. And so I'm just sharing that. Um, uh, the Where we tried to point to a few prophecies in the Bible. Uh, to establish for us that the Bible is a prophetic book, that there are many things in the uh, many scriptures in the Bible um, that have foretold events, and these events have come to pass. Right? So, right from God speaking to Abraham about the Egyptian slavery, about the uh, Babylonian captivity, about uh, Cyrus, the king of Persia, and uh, Isaiah uh, mentioning his name and saying that he will tell the people to return to Jerusalem. That was also fulfilled. Um, the amazing prophecy by Daniel, or given to Daniel, about um, the 70 weeks. Um, we will look at it uh, in some detail late, later on, and also in the, in the second and the third year when we talk, when we study the book of Daniel. Mm, Daniel's uh, 70 weeks, where part of it is 69 weeks, or 69 times 7, 483 years, uh, from the time of King Cyrus giving the decree to go back and rebuild Jerusalem to the coming of the Messiah. Right? So that was also fulfilled. Um, many prophecies concerning Christ, you know, about Jesus, Him coming. Uh, we've listed some here. Uh, those who fulfill the destruction of the temple, the regathering of Israel, and so on. So uh, th this is just a short list to show us that um, the prophecies given in the Bible uh, are reliable. Okay, In the past, they have been fulfilled. So we can, all the prophecies we're going to read about the future, we can be sure that they will be fulfilled. Right? So let's pick up now on page 17, where we ask the question, are we living in the end times? Are we living in the end times? Now, in scripture, uh, we will find the phrase or phrases, latter, latter days, last days, latter times, end of time, time of the end, these phrases many places used. Now, it's only talking about, it's talking about a period that is, uh, it's actually talking about a very long period, you know. It's not ref referring to one particular event, you know, that, that phrase, the way it is used. It could refer, for example, example, Joel prophesied. Hmm? In the last days, I will pour out my spirit. If that happened, Acts chapter 2. Peter stands up and says, Joel prophesied, in the last days I will pour out my spirit. And he says, this is that. I mean, so what was happening in Jerusalem 
at that time was a fulfillment of that. Now we are towards the end of the last days, which is another 2000 years, <laughs> and we are still uh, experiencing, believing God for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So you, in one sense, the last days, according to the way it's used in Joel chapter 2, it began in Acts chapter 2 and is going on till now. Uh, it's the whole period, you know. In the, in, so the, the phrase used in Joel 2, right? But in that same passage, Joel says, the sun will be darkened, the moon will become like blood, and in the heavens I will show signs in the heavens above and on the earth beneath. Now that is very specific. And we see those signs repeated in the book of Revelation. I think it's chapter 6 and chapter 8. When we go through overview, we'll see that in the judgments that God is pouring out, those things are happening. So again, Joel chapter 2, one part of it started off in the book of Acts. Another part of the same prophecy, it is going to happen during the seven years of tribulation, when God is going to pour out the judgments. That time you'll see the same thing repeated. The sun becomes dark. It becomes, you know, uh, 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 the, the moon is turned like blood and there's signs in heavens above and earth beneath. Literally those things will happen. So, but the same phrase is used, last days. Same phrase, but it's referring to different points in time. Uh, so, so we have to, as we read about the end times, the la latter days, uh, last days, and so on, in the Old Testament, New Testament, um, we have to carefully try and understand, you know, when will this happen, or what is he referring to a particular uh, a season, or is, uh, how long is the season, what is he referring to, that we have to uh, understand. You know, so it depends on the passage. And so uh, we can't just say, okay, it's only referring to, you know, the last 20 years or last 30 years or something like that. You know, we can't say. It's, it's, a, it's a time period. What we want to do today is spend some time in the Gospels, um, primarily in Matthew chapter 24. So we will go to Matthew chapter 24. Um, Matthew chapter 24 and Luke chapter 21 are parallel passages. I mean, it's, a, it's a, the same thing as recorded. One is recorded by Matthew, the gospel writer. The other one is recorded by Luke, the gospel writer, right? Uh, so we're not going to read both passages, but I'm just um, saying, you know, you can put both these passages side by side. Uh, we'll just read Matthew 24. We'll read Matthew 24 verses 1 to 51. Let me just give an introduction, then we'll go through the whole chapter. So in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus, uh, you know, he, he, he gets the attention of his disciples. He asks them, how long did this temple take to build? You know, so they say, oh Lord, it took us 40 years. You know, um, he says, you know, the time is coming when this temple will be destroyed. Not one stone will be left on it. Oh, they're like, whoa. You know, what's he saying? This temple is going to be destroyed. But their understanding, okay, it's he's giving us a sign about the end time. So then they ask a further question, Lord, what will be the sign of the end times? You know, what will be the sign of the your coming, you coming to establish your kingdom? So they are asking about that. So then Jesus begins to, you know, give them a lot of details. That's the whole of chapter 24. But how can we understand chapter 24? And I'm giving us a little outline so that when we read it. Yeah. So when Jesus is talking about the signs of the end times, so he's talking about everything. That means from that time, from when they were living, Jesus with his disciples, and then he's coming to the end of the church age. Right? So this is when the things will begin to happen, which are indicating of 
of the end of the church age and the beginning of the seven years of tribulation. Okay. Then he says a little bit about what happens in the seven years of tribulation. And then what will happen at the end of the seven years of tribulation. And then some exhortation, that means uh, some instruction or guidance on how to live in view of what is going to happen. So Matthew 24, chapter 24, and like Luke chapter 21, can be broken into three parts. Three parts. Verses um, 4 to 14. Matthew 24, 4 to 14, will be the signs just before the beginning of the tribulation. Okay? Then, Matthew 24, 15 to 31, I think it is. Um, um, yeah, 15 to 31 is tribulation until the end of the tribulation. Then, 32 to 51 is the exhortation. Okay? What should you do and how to live in the end times? Okay? If you keep that in mind, then it becomes clear to understand. Otherwise, uh, it becomes, you know, like, okay, if, if you put just put everything together, it becomes very confusing. Right? And in some Bibles, it would be broken down like this. Like uh, in, in some Bibles, they have the uh, headings, right? The, those are headings, uh, the, the, the translators have put it. It's, it's not like Jesus put it. But <laughs> translators put it. But they put the headings there for us to understand, right? But in some Bibles, if the heading is not there, then you can follow the same thing, right? That 4 to 14 is... Just before the great tribulation, the tribulation, 15 to 31 is during until the end of the great seven years of tribulation. Then um, 32 to 51 uh, is the um, uh, exhortation how to live when you're in the end times. Okay, so that is if you answer. Right, so let's read. Matthew chapter 24. Let's start from verse 1. Uh, we'll read two verses each and uh, we will go through this, right? So I'm stopping sharing and uh, um, let's read. Those of you in class, can read. Those of you online can also read uh, two verses each. Matthew chapter 24. We'll start from verse 1 and go till verse 51. Okay. Chapter 24, verse 1 and 2. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown, up, thrown down. Hmm. Verse 3, As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when this will happen, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of words and remorse of words. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not it. For, pay, for nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be feminists, uh, feminists, uh, Famine, pestilence, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you and you will be hated by all nations for my namesakes and then many will many will be offended will betray one another and will hate one another then 
many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Okay, maybe we'll just pause here. We'll continue reading. But let's make some comments on these first 14 verses. So the first thing, verses 1 and 2, Jesus shocks the disciples, right? He says, you see this building, see the temple? Not one stone will be left on each other. I mean, so it will be fully destroyed. So it really shocks them. How can he say this? Now, this is not the first time he's saying it. He has said it before. right? So he has even said to the Pharisees, he said, you destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Uh, so that time he was referring to his own body. They were thinking about that temple. Right? He says, how can he build this? It took us 40 years to build this temple. He's saying he'll raise it up in three days. But that time he was referring to his own body. And uh, now he is telling them that temple, the physical temple, right, that is going to be destroyed. Now, that actually took place within 40 years, in AD 70. So this was around AD 30 that Jesus was speaking to his disciples, approximately. AD 70, the Roman emperor, uh, Roman general Titus, he attacked Jerusalem and he destroyed the temple. Okay, so the next 40 years, this this Matthew 24, 1 and 2 was actually fulfilled. It was the temple was destroyed. And right after that, it was uh, not rebuilt. I mean, in the sense, uh, it was taken, I mean, subsequently after many uh, 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 centuries, it was taken over by the Arabs. So that was the last time. That was the last time the Jews really had occupation of it, use of it, and then the Romans came and destroyed it. So it was already fulfilled. Okay. So that prophecy was a near time prophecy. It was fulfilled then. The disciples, you know, they knew Jesus was talking about things that were going to happen. So verse three and four, they said, "Lord, you know," uh, when they went privately, they said. When will these things be? What will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the and of the end of the age? So when will you come? And when will be the end of everything? So when are you coming? Meaning, when are you coming in your kingdom? Right? Now the disciples were were thinking more about when is Jesus going to become king? Right? So that was always in the minds of the Jews, that the Messiah will be king. Right? God said, from the root of David, from the, you know, from the stem of Jesse, from the root of Jesse, David, I will raise up the king. Right? So they were expecting him. Uh, the increase of his government, there will be no end. Uh, and uh, you know, he would be the ri a righteous ruler and so on. So they were expecting the Messiah to come as king. Right? So he said, when are you coming? And when will this happen, right? Uh, and when will be the end of the age? When is the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Jesus is giving them prophecy. But you can imagine in Jesus' understanding, meaning it's not happening now. Now he is going to go to the cross. Now in his earthly life, he's going to go and die on the cross. So he is speaking way about things way into time. Right? Although their, their thought is, oh, when is Jesus going to come as a king? Lord, when is it going to happen? Maybe we'll be there to watch it <laughs> happen. You know? And then in verse 4, 3 onwards, yeah, verse 4 to 14, Jesus is giving them many signs. And one of the, the first sign that he begins with, which he repeats two times, verse 5, Again, he repeats in verse 11, and uh, yeah, um, so he repeats, and I think he repeats it again in, during, uh, in verse 23 later on. But one of the signs, the first sign, he says, Take heed, no one deceives you, 
For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. So think about the first sign he's saying is, there will be big deception. And it will be in the name of Christ. Many will come in my name. And they will say, I am the anointed, the Christ. I am the anointed. Many will come. They will say, I am in my name. And they will deceive many. So think about this. They are coming in Jesus' name. You know, they are coming like in some other name. They are coming in Jesus' name. But they are claiming to be the anointed. And they are deceiving people. Now, how can, now you just think about it. How can somebody coming in Jesus' name be a deceiver? They come in some other, some other name, they deceive. These are coming in Jesus. They're coming in Jesus' name. This is a big effort. Many will come in my name. They'll deceive many. Now, uh, and I'm not saying this to put the person down or anything, but last week uh, there was this, uh, this big, uh, I mean, uh, uh, BBC, BBC World News. They released, uh, um, they released a three-part documentary, investigative documentary, three videos, one, almost one hour each. That means totally three hours. Plus, they released a podcast, a nine-episode podcast. Uh, each episode is about 45 minutes long, where they investigated a very a major uh, prophet, Christian prophet, from uh, Africa. Right? Now, um, he passed away. He passed away in... Um, I don't know which year was this. It's two years ago, right? So this is 24. So I think he passed away in 22. Yeah, two years back. But at that time, he was among you know the biggest ministry, of course, through tel through YouTube and television. And so big influence, right? And uh, you know, lots of healings, miracles, deliverance, prophecy happening in the midst. So that is what attracted people. I, I watched a few of his videos before, yeah, um, online. And if you listen to him preach, if you watch his ministry, everything is just like like gospel ministry, like New Testament. You you can never imagine something is wrong because he's he has the Bible, he's preaching Jesus. The, everything is being done in the name of Jesus. So if you just look at that ministry, I mean, what you see on video, it is, okay, this is genuine. This is gospel preaching. This is, this is the Bible. But, and nobody knows what's happening behind the scenes because all you get to see is the video, right? You see the video, you hear the sermon, you see the miracles, things happening. But BBC investigated, actually they started the investigation before he died. So there was, so this, they feel that this, <laughs> we don't know why he died. Suddenly he died, he was only 57. Uh, but they had started the investigation, so next thing is he's, he's dead. Anyway, uh, so they spent two years investigating. And then they just released last week the, the whole document, full documentary. What they found out was shocking. So he had a prayer mountain. There was a section that the public would go. Now people from all over the world were coming to his ministry. All over the world. Millions, millions of people. Um, huge following. So it's not a small ministry. Huge ministry. So millions of people. And so people come to this prayer mountain. But he had a separate area in the prayer mountain where he would go. And the man who was in charge of the prayer mountain and one or two people who had gone with him, they were reporting their testimony. Actually, when he when he would go inside the prayer mountain there, he was performing black magic. 
he was involved in spiritualism he would take the pictures of various people they would he would go around with you know doing the uh the spiritualist type of thing but every nobody the public would not allowed to go there right so only he went there he had his own space there and only the person who was running the prayer mountain and a few people who went with him they knew what was actually happening inside outside yeah everybody is worshiping jesus and praying right then in that 20 30 years that of his ministry more than 60 women he raped more than 60 he had his own apartment in that they had a big compound he had his own apartment fifth floor and uh, there were people he had selected to be disciples from all over the world who had come to be disciple that means they will work very closely with him like maybe 100 people like that men and women and it was very strange how and some of the people who were affected by him and uh, and he had a clinic inside connected where he would force these ladies to go have abortion so one lady was forced to have five abortions it's all happening in the compound in this big church compound millions of people are coming and he's preaching jesus nobody knows what is happening behind now now some of these people have come out and they've started testifying they said see this is what happened so this one part of it and then a lot of the miracles were ali actually fit so he had a small group it was uh, who would be in they had a section called emergency section so only these few people were allowed to work there so all the sick people came there and if they actually had some serious condition they'll send them back they don't have a problem they will write something big i have cancer this that they'll force them to sit on wheelchairs they have their own wheelchairs and they'll say you have to sit on the wheelchair only then the prophet will touch you so they come and you know they so when they touch you have to stand up and walk you have to shout and scream make so they were trained to do that and now everything is on video people are watching all over the world nobody knows what has actually happened so like this not just like this you know i mean i'm just saying a few things but i listened to all you know all the three documentaries the nine episodes last week it was this news is so shocking and and this was a two year investigation it was not like you know they were not listening to two three people and doing and these were people who were from inside his own right hand man and the lady who was actually editing the videos they were speech she was in charge of the media ministry and she would say we would edit the videos to make it look like the miracle happened instantly so she was saying this is what i was doing i was told to do and the man was running the his right hand man. and then the some of the boys who were working they in that like he had of the disciples who were working with him in that fifth floor area they reported the man who was in charge of the prayer mountain so now they coming out at that time they were all afraid to speak because he had so much control now i was shocked when i heard this because i had watched small parts of it i never i mean i didn't listen to a full sermon or anything i'd watched small parts of it because he was so famous i said okay, what's it and when you see it it's all in the name of jesus bible worship everything in the name of jesus so i was thinking why would this man do it in the name of jesus but in the background all these other things are happening why because this is the best way to attract people right and money was flowing flowing they had their own television station he had his private jet 
he had um, bank accounts in overseas. <laughs> it was just happening. But in front, very simple, uh, you know, the, it was a different image to the, to the world. So it was very shocking uh, listening to this. That is when I was reminded, I was reminded of what Jesus said. Uh, Matthew 24, he said in Matthew 7 also, many will say, Lord, Lord, in your name we have cast out devils. In your name we have prophesied. In your name. He said, I never knew you. Go. So I, that was very good. That time reading that passage, very confusing, you know. Lord, in your name they have done these things. You are saying, I didn't know you. So then I, after listening to this, and I said, Wow, this is one clear example where Matthew 7, Matthew 24 is being fulfilled because they are coming in the name of Jesus. And Paul wrote 2 Corinthians 10. He said, They will come, the messengers of Satan will come like angels of light. Angel of light. But he's actually a messenger of Satan. Because what he's doing inside, totally different. His lifestyle, where what he's actually praying to. Where his power is coming is, is totally different. Because he can't be, you know, abusing women and then he's coming and preaching on love. Yeah. You must love your neighbor. <laughs> but this is the this is the, it is so it was really very shocking. And the fact the thing is. Millions of believers, including other mighty men of God, were deceived. They thought he was genuine. He had big, big crusades in different parts of the world. You know, South America, very famous. South America, Singapore, here. Huge, huge, huge crusades. And even there, they told how he would, his, some of his people go, they will prepare the miracles. They will prepare people for the miracles. They will go catch some poor people, give them nice clothes, give them wheelchairs, bring them into the stadium. And they'll prepare them. When the prophet comes, touches you, you have to get up and walk. The people who came genuinely with ailments, they would, you know, if they are not being prepared by mistake, they came. When he tells them, get them out, they'll all fall down. Because they, they're genuinely lame or crippled, they can't get up. But these other people were um, set up. But uh, we are all people, others are watching from far away on YouTube or thing. They don't know what is happening. But these reports were given by the people who were actually doing it. So we were, we were made to do this. This is what we did. But at that time, he told us, we are doing this to build people's faith. So we did it. We didn't question. And now we realize we were actually hypnotized by him, you know, controlled by him. So anyway, that was just thing. I mean, if you're interested, you could uh, look it up in BBC. Anyway, um, so the, this is very, very shocking. You know, so when Jesus said, many will come in my name. They're coming in the name of Jesus. Not in some other name. In Jesus' name. But they're deceiving people. They're leading them astray. And the sad thing is, many of these people who, have, who are affected, they were disciples. They were staying there for 10 years, 15 years, thinking, you know, do, serving Him. Today their faith is gone. They're not even believing in Jesus because of what they've seen. So this, but they had come sincerely to want to serve Jesus with the passion and zeal. Came here, I mean, to that ministry. Got involved. Got trapped in this, and once you're in the compound, you're not allowed to go outside when you're a disciple. 
so no way of escape you know i mean very difficult to escape I a lot of lot of things then so and today the faith is shaken you know the, the so it was very very sad anyway so after i re heard that and then looking at the prophecies of jesus said, wow this is what jesus said they'll come in my name and they'll deceive many many means millions of people around the world have been deceived yeah. i don't know now when how it has affected people who have now watched this documentary like how it would have affected them because they would have you know believed this man anyway and then he said you will hear of wars verse six wars rumors of wars nation against nation kingdom against kingdom and um of course this war and rumors of wars have always been there you know there's something happening all the time but what we can expect before the great tribulation is this will become increasingly more and more it will be more than before yeah it was always there world war one happened world war two happened different countries were fighting here and there but this is wars wars nation against nation will be more right so as we are seeing more and more fighting happening russia ukraine and israel and palestine and and then other small small wars happening here and there people are fighting and you're seeing more 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 okay it's coming we're getting close uh, it's more than just before right? then you're seeing famines pestilences earthquakes that means um, things happening in the environment uh, things happening in in uh, and weather and other, other conditions, famines, pestilences, earthquakes. Then we are seeing verse 9, there's a lot of persecution. People are being hated. You'll be hated for my name's sake. And this is also happening, even in Christian nations. So at one point, Europe, North America, we would we would say, or much of the Western world, we would say, oh, these are Christian nations. To be a Christian was a good thing. But today it is opposite. In these same places, if you are a Christian, people attack. In these same Europe. North America, it's different. It's not like, oh, you're a Christian, come, come. No. The whole thing is reversed, it's changed. You know, now, uh, what has caused the same, a lot of factors that have, a lot of things have contributed, and part of it, the church is also to blame because, you know, so many leaders have done all kinds of things, and so it has brought a bad name. But the fact is, almost everywhere, there is hatred towards those who follow jesus christ so he says you you'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake right? many will be offended they'll hate one another verse 11 once again jesus is saying many false prophets will rise and deceive many so once again he's repeating that false prophets will rise many will rise many 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 so you have to be very very careful and lawlessness will abound, and the love of many will grow cold. There's lawlessness, meaning sinfulness, will just increase. And then last one is, hey, but in the middle of all this, the gospel will be preached to all the nations. While all this is happening, gospel is <laughs> increasing. The gospel is being preached to all the nations. So. These are all the signs he gave leading or just, just before the tribulation. So this is what you should look at. And then increase, a heightened increase of these signs. And it's happening more and more and more and more. Okay, we're getting closer. Right? Then, from verse 15 onwards, we get into the tribulation. 
Okay, we will read that. We have uh, we still have ten more minutes. So let's read uh, verse fifteen to verse thirty-one. Two verses each, please. Oh, any questions? Yes. Till now, like people coming uh, in the name of the Lord, deceiving people, earthquakes, war, and all this, we saw like it is before tribulation. Mm -hmm. okay? And in verse 13, it says, uh, But he who endures shall be saved. Like, what actually, like, endures means here, like, yeah, so that means we shouldn't give up on our faith. So, example, if you think about right now, okay. We are not in the tribulation, but all these things are happening. So, uh, for example, just what I shared from last week, we don't know how people's faith has been shaken because of you know what has come out now. You can imagine how many people from around the world you know, they went to this place, believe, believing this prophet, how much money they have given, all that. And now suddenly this news is coming out, like this is what he was actually doing. Their faith will be shaken. Oh, how could this be? So you have to make a choice. Are you going to believe Jesus? Are you still going to go back to the Bible and say, the Bible is true, this man or this, this particular ministry or when they messed up, but the Bible is true. And Jesus, in fact, foretold that many will come in my name, you know, and deceive many. So, will you endure to the end? Or are you going to give up? You know, so persecution. You'll be hated. Are you going to still believe? Are you going to give up? So, he who endures to the end will be saved. That means you can't give up on your faith in the middle of all these things that are happening. So imagine Christians, believers who are caught in the middle of war. You know, what is happening? Nation is fighting against nation. And so we can imagine, you know, maybe there are believers in Ukraine, believers in Russia, they're caught in between. Believers in Israel, believers even among the Palestinians. And they're caught in between all this fighting. It's not their fault. Nations fighting against each other. What are you going to do? Will you still keep your faith in Jesus? You know, he who endures to the end will be saved. So you don't give up. That's the point. Yeah. Any other questions? Just the uh, first 14 verses. Any questions online? Okay, let's pick up from verse 15 to verses each, please. Uh, verse 15. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But wait to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days and pray that your fight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great tribulation such as has not been since the beginning of the world until will be shortened. Then if anyone says to you, look here, it's the Christ, or there, do not believe it. Um, can you read verse 21 again? From the... again verse 21, 22, Acha se padna. Hmm. For then there will be great tribulation, hmm. such as has not been since the beginning of the world, hmm. until this time, no or ever shall be, mm. and unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be shaved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Mm. Verse 23. 
then if you if anyone say to you look here is the christ or there do not believe it for false christ and false prophet will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive if possible even the elect see i have told you beforehand therefore if they say to you look he is in the desert do not go out or look he is in the inner rooms do not believe it verse 27 for as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west so also will be the coming of the son of man be for wherever the car case is there the eagles will be gathered together mm. 29 immediately after the tribulation of those days the sun will be darkened and the moon will be not give its light light the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken then the sign of the son of man will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory verse 31 and he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end to heaven on one end of heaven to the other okay. thank you so pa the passage verses 15 to 31 just to uh, highlight a few things here um verse 15 when you see this abomination of desolation so he's giving us a point in time when this you know we call will this we refer to him as the antichrist when you see this what will that be verse 21 then there will be great tribulation so this is now he's speaking about the great tribulation and part of what's happening in the great tribulation one of the signs like okay you're going to see this abomination of desolation spoken of by daniel prophet prophet daniel right when you see then there will be this great tribulation the other point in reference of point in time is verse 29 immediately after the tribulation then the son of man will appear okay so he's very clearly telling us the sequence of events right uh there is this great tribulation that is happening after this the son of man will appear that is the lord jesus coming uh, the, the 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 what is it we call it the second coming but before the abomination of that before this antichrist comes is when we have the secret coming the church being taken out of the way okay he hasn't mentioned that here okay that we understand so the writings of the apostle paul and so on he has given us the signs before the tribulation then he's talking about the tribulation verses 15 on and then he's talking about the coming of the son of man at the end of the tribulation you with me so signs before the tribulation the tribulation and end of the tribulation that is what he has given us okay so in during the tribulation verse 15 what he's saying he says you will see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet daniel now abomination of desolation simply it's a phrase that is used in daniel chapter 9 referring to the antichrist he is an abomination and he is the man who makes desolation he is an abomination to god because he speaks he speaks blasphemies against god abomination desolation means he is very destructive very you know thing. now jesus is not going into all the details on how this 
on how this man comes to power and all. Basically, Daniel says, right, he will sign a seven-year peace treaty, a peace covenant. He'll make a covenant of peace. When we study Daniel, we'll see it. And then in the middle of it, he breaks the covenants. And that's when he becomes this, he shows his true colors of being a, an abomination. Now, so first three years, he's very nice and peaceful and all that, doing good things. He comes uh, like a, uh, like the Christ, you know, almost like a copy of Jesus and uh, coming to be a man of peace and all that. But in the middle of the tribulation, he shows, he changes. He becomes this man who's speaking against God and all that. What will he do? It says, uh, verse 15, he will stand in the holy place. What is he referring to? Daniel had said, this man will go into the temple of God and he will set himself up to be worshipped. So that is what Jesus is saying. He will stand in the holy place. Okay. So this also brings us to one more, one more thought. We, I'll say this and then we'll go for a break. It means there has to be a holy place. There has to be a temple. Right now, there is no temple because the Temple Mount is being occupied by the Arabs, Muslims. Okay, we will st we'll study this later. I'll show you. So where Solomon um, had built the temple, it was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. It was rebuilt by Ezra, Nehemiah. They rebuilt it, the walls and city. Then it was... Um, it was extended by so that was that's called the second temple then it was during king herod's time he made it bigger he built what is known as a temple mount big area during king herod's time so he extended the temple. So it was rebuilt by Nehemiah, uh, Ezra and Nehemiah. Then Herod came, he extended it, the second temple. Then it was broken by the Romans. 70 AD. So now, then the Arabs, on that temple mount, they built their mosque and they built their dome of the rock. So two, two big Muslim structures are standing on the temple. Right now, right now. So right now, there is no Jewish temple on, on that same place. So for this to be fulfilled, saying this, this Antichrist has to be standing in the holy place. Right now, it's not there. So one of the big things that has to happen is a third temple has to be built. On that same place. So this is the big challenge. Right? How is it going to happen? But if you go online, you can see the Jews are ready to rebuild the temple. Everything they need, they've got ready. At some point, we don't know when, they're going to take over and they're going to rebuild the temple. Because this prophecy has to be fulfilled. He's standing in the holy place. Now no holy place. There's no holy place. So this third temple being rebuilt is a big, I would say, a big event that has to happen for the final things in the Bible to be fulfilled. Okay? We'll take a break. We'll come back and we'll look into these things later. All right? Thanks.